Okay, welcome to our physics problem solving videos. These are short videos where you can watch me work out problems in physics as a way to be able to develop your own skills in terms of problem solving to see how I actually solve problems that are of the sort that we do in class and hopefully improve your physics skills along the way. So uh, the first problem is a problem from one dimensional kinematics. Uh, this is a problem based on the movie Tron. As most of you know by now, I'm a big movie buff. So imagine I am trapped on the grid where I have to do a ring battle with Rinsler. We are standing 20 meters apart, and Rinsler throws his disc at me with a speed of 7 meters per second. At the same instant that he throws his disc, I throw my disc also with a speed of 5 meters per second. And the two things we're asked to find is how long does it take for the two disks to collide and how far away from me do the two disks collide. Now this is very typical of the kinds of problems that you see in physics where you're given some information, but in order to solve the problem you have to take that information and organize it and you also have to synthesize that information and make some assumptions about how to put it together in the right way. And as we have advocated many times, good strategies that I think for doing this are always, always drawing pictures. Drawing pictures help you get everything that's going on straight in your head. And also I very strongly advocate making tables of your kinematic variables in order to keep track of all the information. So let's go ahead and solve this problem together. So the very first thing that I like to do is draw a picture. And in terms of this problem, the thing that we're most interested in is where do the two disks start? Namely, what is the location of me and Rinsler? And then where is it that the two disks collide? So I'm going to start by locating our combatants in this problem. So I'll put one of us over here. And I'll put the other one of us over here. And we throw our disks at each other. And so we have one disk traveling to the right. And we have the other disk traveling in the opposite direction to the left. And those disks are going to collide somewhere in the middle. And my task in this problem is to figure out where that point that they collide actually is. Now, as with all physics problems, you have to make some assumptions right off the bat. Now, these assumptions don't matter uh, in terms of the ultimate answer. You should get the same answer as your partner or as your classmate or as me, even if you make different assumptions about the way that we set things up. And in this case, the assumption that we're going to talk about is the assumption of setting up our coordinates. So we have to choose a coordinate system to solve the problem is. In one-dimensional kinematics, we typically call those coordinates x. And in order to set up our coordinates, we have to identify where do we call x equals 0 and which direction is the positive direction. Now, our habit is usually to have positive directions traveling to the right, so I'll go ahead and follow that convention. And the choice of origin is always chosen to make your life easy. And so in this case, I think the easiest thing to do, in the absence of any other obvious choice, is to make one of the starting points at x equal to 0. So right here, I'll put x equal to 0. And I draw the positive x in this direction, so I don't forget what the positive direction is. And we'll put our other person at 20 meters. OK? so. Now I can start thinking about writing out my kinematic table. Now the kinematic table is a tool for keeping track of all of the kinematic information that we're interested in knowing or that we've been told or that we've found. And it gets exceedingly complicated, especially when there are multiple objects in the problem, as there are in this case. And so the table is very useful for keeping track of information. So uh, in these one-dimensional problems right now, the only kinematic variables that we have are the final position, which we call x, the initial position, which we call x0, the speed, which we call v, and the time in the problem. So those are the only four kinematic variables that we have. And in this case, we have two objects. The disk that I threw, 
we'll call this me, and the disk that Rinsler threw. So I'm going to have an uh, entry in the kinematic table for each of the two disks, one for the disk that I threw and one for the disk that Rinsler threw. So I'm going to expand my table here, and I'm going to make two columns, and I'm going to label one column me and one column Rinsler. Okay, and now I go through the problem and I look at every single thing that I was told and I try and figure out where does it go in the kinematic table. Now I've drawn my picture so I've already produced some information that I wasn't told. In particular my starting position or the starting position of my disk I've decided is at x equals zero meters. That wasn't stated in the problem, but it's an assumption that was made based on the way that I set up the problem. So for me, my disk started at x naught is equal to zero meters. In a similar way, Rinsler we've chosen to be standing at x equal to 20 meters. So Rinsler's disk, starting where he was standing, has an initial position of x naught equals to 20 meters. What's the final position of my disk? Well, we don't know. That's one of the things that we're asked to find. So I'm going to put a question mark there. The final position of Rinsler's disk, we don't know. So I'm going to put a question mark here. But this is a point where you should have an aha moment, a realization. The problem asks you, when do the two disks collide? And so what that means is that the position of my disk and the position of Rinsler's disk at the end of the problem are the same. And to indicate that, I always draw myself an equal sign right there in the middle of my kinematic table to imply that these two values, to remind me that these two values are going to be exactly the same at the end of the problem. Okay, so now what about time? Well, time is unknown. It's one of those things that I'm asked to find. And again, it's uh, implicit in the problem that the time that I'm asked to find is the same for both me and Rinsler's disks. Both of us throw the disks at the same time, at time t equal to zero. And the problem ends when the two disks collide, which is at the same time. So again, I'm going to put my equal sign here. Now I've left the velocity line for last because this is a point where we have to be a little bit careful. We're told both of the speeds. Okay, so the problem tells me that my disk was thrown at a speed of 5 meters per second and that Rinsler's disk was thrown at a speed of 7 meters per second. Now this is the point where you have to be careful. I've made an assumption about this problem. I've set up a coordinate system such that a very specific direction is positive, to the right. So any object which has a speed traveling to the right, we say has a positive velocity. I'll put a plus sign there to make that very explicit. And any object thus traveling to the left has a negative velocity. In this case, Rinsler's disk started at positive position and is traveling towards the negative direction. So the speed of his disk is given a minus sign. Okay, so at this point we have all of the information in our kinematic table. We need some equations to work with. And so the kinematic equation that we're working with in this case is simply the position as a function of time. Now I'm going to write this equation down twice. I'm going to write it down once for my disk, and I'm going to write it down once for Rinsler's disk. And so in order to do that, I'm going to use exactly the same equation, but I'm going to introduce some subscripts where it's necessary. Now, I'm not going to introduce a subscript for x because it's the same for both Rinsler's disk and my disk. So for me, 
I'm going to write x is equal to my starting position. So I'll write xm for me plus my speed. I'll write vm for me times time. And time in this case is the same for both me and Rinsler, so I won't put a subscript on it. For Rinsler, I'll write a similar equation. I'll write x without a subscript because it's the same for me and Rinsler. I'll write xr for the initial position of Rinsler's disk. I'll write vr for the speed of Rinsler's disk. And again, the time is the same for both of us. So, if I look at my kinematic table, and I look at my kinematic equations here, I notice that I have two unknowns. I don't know the final position, and I don't know the time. And I have two equations, an equation for Rinsler and an equation for me, both of them involving those two unknowns. Two equations, two unknowns, so I can do that algebra. So I have to make a choice as to what to do, and we are asked to find how long does it take the disks to collide, and how far from me do they actually collide. So let's find the time first. I think the easiest thing to do to find the time is to subtract these two equations from each other. So uh, there's a variety of ways that you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually write them like a big subtraction problem. I'll write them one on top of the other and then subtract them. So let me write x is equal to xm plus vmt minus the equation x is equal to xr plus vrt. So x minus x is 0, xm minus xr plus vmt minus vrt okay I can factor a t out of this so this is 0 is equal to xm minus xr plus t times vm minus vr and now I can solve for t. So t times vm minus vr is equal to xr minus xm. I moved this quantity to the other side of the equal sign and so it changed signs. And so t is equal to xr minus xm divided by vm minus vr. So that is the expression for the time in the problem. Okay? Now, once I have that, I can substitute it back into one of my x equations to find the x value of the disks when they collide. Now, generically, this problem works if I choose to substitute it into either one of these two x equations. I'm going to choose to substitute it into my equation because one of the things that I know is true is that this xm value here is zero. So in the end, that's going to make my algebra a little bit easier. And so the final x position is xm, which I know is going to be zero, plus vm times the time value. And that's what I got in this equation. So this is xr minus xm over vm minus vr. And so that is the final value 
for the position where the disks collide. At this point, I can take the information here from my kinematic table and calculate the value of the time. If I plug those numbers in, I will get that time is equal to 1.7 seconds. One of the things you should be careful of is making sure you get the right combination of minus signs. If you don't, you won't get that value of the time. And if I then calculate how far it is from me that the disks collide, I find that the distance from me to the place where the disks collide is 8.3 meters. And again, I can get that by simply substituting in all of these values from my kinematic table at the top of the equation. Okay, so that's the end of our first problem. Look it over, try and do it yourself, and let me know if you have any trouble. I'll talk to you next time.